Hello and welcome to another Brawl Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Black White Super Friends Planeswalker deck featuring Atomic Wielder of Law as its commander, suggested by my supporters on Patreon. This 3 mana 2 4 flyer has Vigilance and Affinity for Planeswalkers, so it gets a 1 mana discount for each Planeswalker we control, so we can often cast it for just 2 mana. And then later in the game, if we lost Atomic a few times, we can also maybe discount the commander tax to still play it on the cheap. And then whenever an opponent attacks us or a planeswalker we control with two or more creatures, that opponent loses three life and we get to draw a card. Sadly, not an ability that's going to come up a whole lot, since players tend to answer Tomic first before they start attacking, but uh, still a nice upside. And then I've uh, broken the deck down into a few different categories, starting with spot removal, we've got a bunch of sweepers, mana acceleration to try and get our planeswalkers down ahead of schedule, and then of course the largest category are the actual planeswalkers, and finally the miscellaneous section also has a few ways to get planeswalkers back from the graveyard, and other specific synergies with planeswalkers which are always fun. So now for the deep dive, starting with our removal, we've got swords to plowshares and fatal push at one mana, then a Fateful Absence, Get Lost, and a Bitter Triumph can also hit Planeswalkers, and Shielder's Edict on occasion as well. And then there's a Drown in Icker, which can also let us proliferate, so that's a great way to increase our loyalty on our Planeswalkers, and maybe speed up an ultimate, and then go for the Throat and Heartless Act, more efficient 2 mana answers to creatures. And then Loron can deal with artifacts and enchantments. Oath of Kaya deals 3 and gains 3 when entering, and then can also punish opponents for attacking our Planeswalkers. And then our sweepers include Path of Peril, and then the classic 4 mana sweepers, Day of Judgment and Wrath of God. Could also play with uh, Kaya's Wrath, although it's a little harder to cast if we're relying on the colorless mana from our artifact. And then Doomscar can be foretold early. And finally, Blood on the Snow is the reason why we have snow-covered basics to occasionally get back a Planeswalker as well. And then our mana artifacts and mana production includes land tax. Since we're not ramping by putting additional lands in play, this can be very nice, especially when you're on the draw, but also effective against the green ramp decks that search up additional lands. Dark Ritual can set up some nice explosive starts, getting a Planeswalker down sooner. The Birth can find a Planes and then also make a wall to protect our Planeswalkers. Lotho makes a treasure whenever a player double spells, so that can also ramp us. And then we've got the classic 2 mana artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone and the new Iron Crag. And then Staff of Completion is also great, as it can not only make mana at the cost of life, but we can also draw cards with it, or more importantly proliferate, which can also be awesome with multiple Planeswalkers on the battlefield. And then Warden Power Stone makes 2 mana if it gets to untap, so it can also speed things up significantly. And then our Planeswalkers include the two 3 mana Gideons, Black Blade, and we've got Gideon of the Trials, which can turn into creatures and apply pressure. And then a Davriel and Liliana can make the opponent discard, Liliana can also make them sack a creature. Kaya can handle the Graveyards and 1 mana permanence, also good against tokens. Then we've got Archangel Elspeth, which can make tokens and maybe fly some of our creatures. Elspeth Sun's Nemesis making more 1 1 tokens can also be escaped out of the graveyard. Sarah can make a 4 4 flying vigilant token and can then pump up our flyers, also good with Tomic. The Wandering Emperor doesn't need an introduction, great removal, a source of plus 1 counters and samurai tokens. Sorin making 2 3 flying life linking vampires and drawing extra cards. Got Kaya Spirit's Justice from the newest expansion, can also make 1 1 flying spirit tokens and maybe be used as removal. And then a Solemn Visitor is also pretty fun, giving our team plus one plus two and a lifelink until our next turn. Can also make two two flying vampires, and the emblem is very achievable at only minus six. And then the opponents will have to sacrifice a creature at the beginning of their upkeep each turn, so that can also be very effective. And then a Karn can often find additional lands with a plus one, and occasionally a minus one can be used to get back something from exile. And then at 5 mana we continue with Elspeth Resplendent. The minus can maybe hit something nice like a ramp artifact or a cheaper planeswalker, but we can also give our creatures various abilities. And then there's Ashiok, which is very nice in combination with the uh, Staff of Completion especially, but can also just make some tokens and draw extra cards. Spider Queen also makes tokens and draws extra cards. Kaya can protect our creatures, making spirit tokens when they die, and then can also exile opposing permanents. The Eternal Wanderer can make double striking samurai, flicker stuff, or wipe the board, leaving us with our best creature and the opponent's worst creature. And then a Dreadhorde General, one of the more powerful planeswalkers with a minus four, can uh, make each player sack two creatures, can draw extra cards whenever our creatures die, and can make additional zombies. 
And then Avraska and Betrayal's Sting can also draw some more cards while proliferating, adding more loyalty to all our Planeswalkers. And then the Ultimate can also be game-winning if we can proliferate once more. Then there's Soren Grim Nemesis drawing extra cards, dealing damage, and then can also be used as removal with a minus X ability. And then Akaya Intangible Slayer can drain the opponent, draw extra cards, and can also be very nice against creatures with powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities. And then finally, the miscellaneous section includes Janna's Gift, can turn one of our Planeswalkers into a creature with power toughness equal to their loyalty, essentially. So that's also a very nice way to kind of work up towards an ultimate, since now the opponent can no longer attack our Planeswalkers to reduce their loyalty, so they'll need different answers. The Archivist can punish opposing search effects, good against all the fetch lands that have been introduced, and good against various ramp cards. Then a Bitter Blossom can make 1-1 rogue tokens, so that can also help protect our Planeswalkers and apply a bit of pressure. We've got Heart of Kiron, which can easily be crewed with our Planeswalkers by removing loyalty, and then a 4-4 Flying Vigilance can also play offense and defense quite nicely. Then there's Phyrexian Arena as a source of card advantage. And then at 5 mana, there's some very nice ones. Conquer's Death can exile opposing permanent and eventually get a Planeswalker back from our graveyard. Urza Assembles the Titans can find a Planeswalker with Chapter 1. On Chapter 2, we get to put one in play for free. And finally, we get to activate loyalty abilities twice this turn. Then there's the Eldest Reborn, similar to Conquer's Death, can deal with an opposing permanent and eventually get a creature or Planeswalker back from the graveyard. And then a Vile Offering requires a Planeswalker or Legendary Creature in play before we can cast it, but then it's also removal that can get something back from the graveyard. And last but not least, Breach the Multiverse can also mill each player for 10 cards and then get back a creature or Planeswalker from each graveyard. And then the mana base doesn't have a ton of utility lanes. I did include Karn's Bastion to maybe help us proliferate. Beacon can gain us more life if we play Planeswalker spells. And then we've got a few ways to give us a bit of card selection with a Temple to scry. And the Backstreet's also very nice since we can fetch it up with our various fetch lanes. And then Surveil 1. And then uh, the Abandoned Mire can maybe get back a Planeswalker. Iganjo can be used as removal. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamio Field Researcher. What do we think of our hand? We've got some good acceleration early, missing Planeswalkers, I guess. Um, I think I still give this a shot. Can surveil by getting the uh, new surveil land. But there's a small chance we need to fatal push a mana elf. Okay, we don't. So we both get to surveil. And a beacon isn't bad. I wouldn't mind an extra land drop. But hopefully we don't flood out. Signet we can destroy. So we've got lots of interaction. Probably going to end up drawing with Loran to find more action. Opponent with an opt-in response. And then Edict is also an answer to their Planeswalker, which uh, can be very effective, especially if you get it out early. So hit for two. And we'll draw. Just a land. So you can play Idol and Tomic. Keep up Fatal Push. Opponent does have a instant speed play here. Joint exploration to ramp. And the fear here is that our opponent kind of goes over the top. So we need to find something to apply a bit more pressure. The fairy, yep. So can't cast any instants. 
and stomach packing. Okay. Can finish off the fairy. And then Kaya was perfect. Exactly what we wanted. And for now we'll draw. Hit Orlando for the turn. No need to use Loran to draw anymore. And then Gideon can apply a nice bit of pressure as well. Opponent keeps on ramping. Yeah, if they ramp with creatures, we can answer them, but uh, instants and sorceries we can't really interact with. So there's still the potential for the opponent to go big. Solomon gets another land. Possible they built their time your deck to kind of abuse the minus seven ultimate to get that omniscience effect, and then their hand might have some expensive spells in it. For now, I think we just take our turn. And then minus Inkai on Solemn's not bad, since we'll get our own copy. And they don't get the death trigger. So I think that's a fine starting point. And then we can play Gideon, maybe attack with Guardian Idol. Or we can just play Tomic. Can maybe do both actually. And then Gideon can plus. Giving uh, lifelink, I guess. Indestructible, also an option if we're worried about a wide sweeper. Something like a Cyclonic Rift or Rivers Rebuke can send everything packing. Farewell is a good one too. Although it doesn't hit our Planeswalkers at least. I think we'll draw on the way out. So, artifacts are gone. Keep drawing with Kaya. Or we can maybe plus, so we're gonna have the minus three at the ready. Although most creatures we can handle. So maybe I still prefer drawing. Aldous Reborn's great, and so is Urza assembles the Titans. Okay. So let's see, play Lotho. And then we can still assemble the Titans. I'll start from chapter one. And Davriel could be okay. Could cast it now with the Dark Ritual. Yeah, that might be worth it. Even though our opponent's got plenty of cards in hand. Make this quick. I'm the thought. Discarding a Servitor. Okay, so they've got seven mana for the turn. A run goes to the graveyard. Can maybe get it back with Eldest Reborn. And at the ferry, we can answer in a multitude of ways. But Alice Reborn might be the cleanest answer here. Serum Snare to bounce Gideon. And that resolves. Otherwise, we could have used a minus six. And it also points towards kind of the proliferate synergy to speed up Tamiyo's ultimate. Take our turn and put in Gideon. He's back. Start with Dariel discarding. 
think you'll be needing that. Before we show them the Eldest Reborn. That cleans up the ferry. Probably wanted to tap the beacon. But that's alright. Play land tax. And at this point, Kaya might want to just deal three. Just give up on it. Make Lotho indestructible just in case. And then I could play Tomic for a little bit more pressure. So yeah, I should have had a, an extra treasure had we tapped the beacon. So let's see what our opponent comes up with. Doubling season, all right. So they can play Tamiyo and immediately ultimate. And I guess there's no window for me to cast Children's Edict. Yeah, that's uh, problematic. The fairy also gets to immediately ultimate. So their opponent's going off. Sorry, I'm late. And now augury to proliferate. Um, I guess we could Shieldred's Edict now. They just sacrifice Tamyo. This is only from hand. I guess we may as well. Time you down. The ferry up to ten loyalty. It's gonna emblem. Farewell. And can they start drawing? Four cards remain. Dry it is fine. Sage is fine, more proliferate. One card left in hand, so if it's not a card draw effect, we should be good. All right, land tax triggers. Get three lands. Opponent has to discard their last card. And we get to doubly activate our Planeswalkers, so Kaya can uh, plus twice if we'd like. And then go for a throat sage. What you and that's enough for lethal. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Karizav, so mono red aggro. Well, Path of Peril and Doomscar are both pretty useful in this type of matchup. Don't have any planeswalkers, but I'm sure we'll find some. So we can uh, foretell Doomscar on two and then cast Path on three. And then Soren seems like a nice one. For now, a rabbit battery. And there's Karizev. This enters untapped thanks to the backstreet. So, yeah, I think we Path of Peril stick to the plan. Our opponent might present some more expensive creatures that we cannot hit with a three mana path. Uh, robbers next. Eternal Wonder is not bad. So if we play Sorin, make a Vampire, there's a chance our opponent just has a 1-mana burn spell to both get rid of the token and Sorin, which would be a little bit annoying. But uh, yeah, what's the alternative? Play Tomic, play Jada's Gifts. And then if I draw land, I can maybe equip Sorin with uh, equipment. Kind of plays into our own Doomscar, but I don't hate it. And just think the odds of our opponent having a burn spell are pretty high. 
and just plussing Sorin on nothing also feels pretty bad. Alright, Warcrafting deals with Tomic. So they can keep attacking with a robber, but at least they're not exiling anything. And it's pretty easy to replay Tomic later once we get a few planeswalkers down. Found the swords. Yeah, so we're once again faced with a similar decision. I think we just pass with swords available now. Even though it's not very mana efficient. Swords could also be a good answer to Faceless Haven, which we otherwise don't have a great way of answering. So they just hit for two, I'll take it. Opponent does nothing. Yeah, let's take our turn. Find a Kaya instead. Okay, I'll play Kaya and then we'll be able to equip it with Jada's Gift if we want to. So this now turns into a creature. And creatures you cannot attack with your Robber of the Rich. But maybe they have a bunch of burn spells in response here. So yeah, equipping our creatures with Jada's Gift is an easy way to build up loyalty and set up an ultimate. Alright, point's got an obliterating bolt to deal four. Fair enough. So they've got some heavy duty removal here. And I play with Fire Ghost Face, maybe looking for land 4, which they kept on top. In the meantime, we found Lotho. So I could play it and Swords the Robber just to make a treasure. Yeah, I guess we want to get the ball rolling. Even though our opponent likely has some more threatening creatures in hand. And then next turn we can make the play of Sorin equip. Or with the lands, maybe play Eternal Wonder. Lotho gets strangled. And a Phoenix of Ash can fly over for two. Also a good target for Conqueror's Death, so we can exile it for good. Is that better than playing Sorin and equipping? We could play Sorin, equip Jada's Gift, and then activate. And then we would have a 5 power or 6 power life linker, uh, which they will have a hard time attacking into. And then next turn it can attack and gain life. Yeah, I think that's better than Conqueror's Death here. I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. Okay. And then we're not too far from the minus six emblem, which is quite back-breaking. Opponent with a fiery impulse, oh no, they've got even more removal. So they can actually take out Sorin. Another four damage spell. Well, that's uh, too bad. Now we probably need to exile the Phoenix. Doesn't leave an answer to Faceless Haven, which can still hit us. But yeah, I don't see any amazing alternative. And then we'll eventually get our Planeswalker back, although never mind, they both got exiled. Karizav is back, that's acceptable. And then I guess we can fetch Godless Shrine here. Staff of Completions, interesting. So, play Eternal Wanderer. Make a token and then equip Eternal Wonder. That looks fine. As opposed to cast Doomscar. And that's it, I guess play a staff. Yeah, wanna get a board presence going. I fight for the entire multiverse. I brought back. Yeah, 
And our opponent concedes. All right, the Eternal Wonder finally gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nissa, Ascended Animist, so Mono Green Ramp. Yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup, especially if they can ramp using instants and sorceries as opposed to mana creatures. Do have a handful of removal, and then Urza assembles, maybe finding a Planeswalker could help us take over. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it a shot. Just hope that they're on the creature plane. No mana Alpha 1. Would make sense to have creatures to combine with uh, Nyssa, and there we see Florahedron. Alright, so instead of getting the Surveil Land, I'll just get Godless Shrine so we can push and keep up our two mana interaction in their turn. Alright, Bitter Blossom gives us kind of a proactive play. Start making 1 1s. Opponent now ramping with Iron Crag. The keeper we can handle. And Davrail's also somewhat tempting. I think I should still try and deal with our creatures first. And then Edict can also be an answer to Nyssa. It's gonna be a Bramble Familiar next, so yeah. Our hands working out here, with her opponent presenting lots of creatures. So we'll get in for one. And then Davriel is tempting. Or we can let the opponent untap and maybe cast Nyssa, but we'll be able to handle it. Keeping the token back to block familiar in case the attack was also reasonable. Although we don't mind trumping. Celebration, a nice way to proliferate and set up an ultimate. And our Renan 7's next. Alright, that's a good one. Can fill their hand to protect against Davriel. As opposed to making a token. A land tax. Currently we're kind of breaking even, but next turn it'll trigger. So yeah, Davriel minusing is not particularly exciting, but probably still worth doing. I don't think you'll be needing that. And then we can Edict, Renan 7, play a land tax, or get Tomic down. Tomic can maybe help pressure Nyssa if they deploy it next turn. Land Tanks guarantees that I can play Urza Assembles, which is also pretty fun. Although I think Nyssa is a bigger concern. So, yeah, let's uh, Edict. And play Tomic. Gonna be a Nyx Bloom Ancient instead. Okay, that's a scary one. So we can get our last card, although next turn they can still play a fully powered Nyssa. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Worn Power Stone doesn't seem necessary. And they had a Mammoth left. So next, play Kaya. And uh, hit a creature and a non-creature, so we can kind of get more life gain out of it, maybe. Topiary Stomper is next. And then they can still play Nyssa. With all this mana they could also pick up the Familiar and use the Adventure. So 
yeah, next turn they can try and set up a very powerful overrun. So being able to hit Nissa with our flyers is important. And then Kaya's not a bad answer to the a large token. A land tax goes off. And a Karn. Okay, so yeah, we have options. This is going to minus. Attack Nissa. So they won't be able to ultimate. And then we could Urza Assembles start from chapter one. And try and hit another Planeswalker for next turn. Or we can Karn plus and look for more interaction to answer the Nyx Bloom Ancient, perhaps. Let's go with a Planeswalker approach. And an Oath of Kaya can deal three, but a Doomscar can clear the board. It's probably more important. So we can finish off Nyssa, clear the board, and then try and take over with our remaining Planeswalkers. So we don't need to reveal here to keep it a secret. It was important for us not to put Nissa down to one loyalty, otherwise they could minus one to essentially uh, sacrifice it and then replay it to minus seven and kill us. Although currently Stomper cannot attack. Nyx Bloom goes after Kaya which can otherwise answer the token from Nissa, but since we're gonna Doomscar next turn it doesn't matter. Uh, we just need enough power to finish off Nissa, which I guess we do. So we'll keep Kaya alive. And yeah, we could see them use the Bramble Familiar's ability. Nope, playing a Huntmaster instead. Yeah, great card, but uh, turns out it's running right into our sweeper. So we'll get a free Karn. Plus, before revealing the Doomscar. Dark Ritual, Abandoned Mire. Alright, finish off Nissa. Wipe the board. And Kaya can plus. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Narset and Lightened Master. So no point in keeping spot removal when their creature has hexproof. Urza assembles would be nice, and Cold Steel Heart can maybe ramp it out. But the rest of our hands, not great. I guess Emperor we can still play to apply a bit of pressure, so I'm starting to talk myself into it, even though Swords is a dead card. Alright, I'll try it. Possible they have some other random creatures we can hit. But yeah, board wipe that actually destroys all creatures would be more useful. Opponent with the Signets. Could main phase the Emperor, but if they counter it, then we can resolve Urza Assembles, which might be better. Power Stone's a good one, too. So next turn they could already play their commander, so we need to find an answer to it. Liliana is uh, kind of the perfect answer, so I'll take it. And uh, let's see here. We're gonna end up sacking two creatures next turn. So maybe for now just get a counter. Attack. And then Urza Assembles next turn can put in Liliana for free if we don't hit a land drop. So we'll start from chapter one. And then Staff of Completion could be a fun way to maybe Emblem Liliana, but since we're going to minus first, 
we may as well try and hit another planeswalker on top. And we did, Gideon, okay. So they may not suspect a Liliana now. Can also proliferate with Drown and Icker if we want to get to Chapter 3 right away. So with a Staff of Completion we would have gotten close to ultimating the Liliana the same turn we played it. Day of Judgment now also an answer, in case uh, this somehow doesn't work. So we'll start by attacking with our token. I guess our opponent can block because of first strike. But uh, yeah, we could Day of Judgment and then just plus Liliana. That's maybe slightly better. And make some more tokens. Okay. Sundering Titan is next, ouch. So that's gonna blow up Plains and Swamp, including Godless Shrine. Could Swords the Sundering Titan, opponent would gain 7. I guess her opponent also loses Island Mountain, so it's not the best Sundering Titan I've ever seen. And they left us with a Godless Shrine, interestingly enough. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. And then we'll lose our Godless Shrine, but our opponent loses Rogrin Triumph. So that was a fun turn. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We can actually ultimate Liliana here if we wanted to by uh, plussing, proliferating, and then minus nine. Although, not even sure the minus nine would be all that effective since the opponent just lost all of their lands anyway. But uh, yeah, that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sephara, a mono-white flying deck. And uh, yeah, this hand seems way too clunky. No mana acceleration, too many expensive cards. And a card like Day of Judgment could be important, although Sephara does make their team indestructible. So ideally we still find some exile effect or other spot removal for Sephara. And then Day of Judgment can take care of the rest. For now get our Surveil land. And turn to Iron Crag could set up turn 3, Day of Judgment. It's gonna be a flowering for now. So yeah, we're looking for more Planeswalkers to ramp into since we have a lot of mana acceleration. Breach the multiverse I'll take. So play Iron Crag. Next turn Power Stone and turn after we could already Breach. Alright, time for their first flying creature, Welcoming Vampire. Now with the flowering maybe a bit of a nombo with the Vampire. But uh, yeah, Liliana also lines up pretty well here. So that might still be worth it over playing the Power Stone. Battle Screech, so that's a very good one, making a pair of flyers. Now we could wait for them to flash back Battle Screech and then set up our Day of Judgment, which I kind of like. And then for now play Power Stone. I guess we'll discard to Liliana, since we can maybe get back Gideon with the Breach, or we could play Tomic, but that's probably gonna die to our own Day of Judgment. So yeah, I'll discard Gideon. Don't think we'll need it too much. And then I also have the option of casting Get Lost on the Flowering, which will shrink down their birds if they only send one at Liliana. Spellbinder's gonna have a look now. So our opponent's gonna see the Day of Judgment, meaning that they're not gonna flash back Battle Screech. I guess we'll just Get Lost to Flowering. Has a good use of our mana. Opponent can select Breach the Multiverse if they want to. They still get to finish off Liliana. 
but then uh, they're back to square one, whereas it's not going to take us too long to get up to 9 mana for Breach. So Liliana down. Still fine to cast a Day of Judgment. Whatever. Luck favors the foolish after and then we can play Tomic as well. I'm gonna decline here since we need our mana. Okay, and uh, yeah, opponent could potentially cast a 7 mana Sephara. Selfless Spirits would have protected from Day of Judgment as well, making their team indestructible. But now they need a bunch more creatures before they can flash back Battle Screech. Cavalry can pump their team. So we'll get Godless Shrine, and then with an untapped land we can Breach, which should be pretty effective. Edict takes care of self of Spirits. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can wait. Cave is 5 mana, so they can't animate in response. And our opponent has seen enough. Next turn, with a land, we get to Breach, and then hopefully take it from there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Croxa, a discard deck. And we could Dark Ritual out Phyrexian Arena on turn 1, or set up a Kaya on turn 3. I'm kind of down for turn 1 Phyrexian Arena against the discard deck. That should help us keep up. Now both Bitter Blossom and Arena will mean losing two per turn. But uh, we've got a few ways to gain life in our deck. And then Black Rat's not going to have many answers to a resolved enchantment. There's a few out there. And if our opponent's packing some cheaper discard effects, it's just good to use up our Dark Ritual while we can. And yeah, there's the Inquisition. Point proven. Can't play the backstreet. And then Edict doesn't seem needed right now. Altar of Dementia. Nice synergy with Croxa as it can sacrifice it to enable the escape. Cold Steel, probably better than Tomic now. There's Croxa. For now, a land can go. Opponent's in full control, so they can use Altar. Although it's still going to be a few turns before they can actually escape. Alright, they might get their next turn already. So we get to curve Kaya into Liliana, which isn't too bad. I don't think we care about minusing on altar. So it would just be plusing. So it could also go Mindstone plus Tomic and then next turn Liliana. Although getting to plus Kaya in the meantime is probably not a bad thing. So if they have Planeswalker removal, they might use it on Kaya, and then Liliana gets to stick around. Alright, so Croxa is coming back. Discard Mindstone. Never mind, Scrap Orc Mutt. Gonna discard and draw. Maybe they're looking for answers to Kaya before they commit Croxa. And I thought Seas will take Liliana now. No, 
Okay, so can play Tomic and Gideon. Plus Inkaya. Don't worry, I got you. And I'll plus Gideon on the mutt. Your weapons won't help you win. It's just you and me. So Croxa can get our last card, but yeah, our opponent concedes. We could emblem Kaya next turn, and there's too many planeswalkers for them to deal with. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Koth Fire of Resistance, so Monorad control deck. And we've got a reasonable hand. Maybe a few too many answers to creatures. But at least Conqueror's Death can hit Planeswalkers as well, and so does Eldest Reborn. So yeah, I'll keep it, even though we could use some actual Planeswalkers instead. Cold Steel Hearts is a nice one, setting up Koth next turn. For now, I guess we'll play the fetch line so we can surveil. Would like to find a bit of ramp so we can prevent them from getting the emblem down. Planes, I mean, I could keep. Oath of Kaya can hit Koth to at least slow down a little bit. So we'd still like a good 4 mana play. File, another ramp artifact, and an ornithopter we can swords. Okay, Gideon is potentially a good way to pressure Koth, although can imagine them having some burn spells to uh, take it out. But it's probably better than playing Tomic. And then next turn we can deploy one of our enchantments. Magda is next. So they can sack it to the Eldest Reborn. So we need to conquer the death, Koth, to uh, prevent the emblem. I guess we can also turn Gideon into a creature to maybe make them chump with Magda. And then I could still Elders are born. And then keep Conqueror's Death for maybe a bigger threat. Can expect him to have some expensive Colorless cards, various artifacts, maybe even Eldrazi. For now, a Rune Blaster hits our land. And they can start drawing and discarding. So Gideon takes two. But Oath also triggers. Opponent discards. And then can play Tomic and Drown. Drown proliferates our Saga. Just gets back a Magda, which isn't all that exciting. But it's still something. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Could 
could also get back the Rune Blaster, but uh, it's not going to be with Kicker. So Magda seems more useful. Okay, don't have a lot of exciting cards left, but uh, definitely want to get rid of the Inner Sun with our Conqueror's Death. They will still get a trigger end of turn. And they hit a Lightning Strike, which can go after Gideon. Although Conqueror's Death will eventually get it back. Heart of Kiron we can eventually deploy. I guess with a treasure we can do it now. Although they also have File, which will now draw them two cards. Which is probably why they stopped uh, using Koth to get more mountains. So we're still not in the best spot. If our opponent's got some good finishers, Staff can draw. And can also proliferate Koth. But now any Planeswalker we draw can crew Heart of Kiran. And yeah, I guess uh, the combo of the Great Door with File lets them draw two cards. And now an Orbrask's Forge. Okay. Koth pluses. So they're getting a lot of value. They might have been better off not uh, getting the Mountain so they can draw two next turn once again. Staff can also proliferate the counter on the forge. So, yeah, can do a whole lot here. Just uh, attack Koth to prevent an emblem. But we're not making a lot of progress. If we send both at Koth, then they can't mine us anymore. Which is maybe worth it. Yeah, finding a Planeswalker here would have been pretty helpful. Suppose they can still proliferate and then minus three. And that's what they'll do. Can take out the token from Forge. But we can also take the hit. So next turn we get back Gideon, it seems. So keeping the Heartless Act to protect Gideon could be important. Our opponent is paying a bunch of life to the staff, so they're down to 9. Discards a Mountain. And Tomic down. Can still redeploy it, maybe. Take 4. Just to land the draw. So welcome back, Gideon. Actually going for a plus one counter wouldn't be crazy here, since it will turn into a creature. Sure. And then we can plus. Targeting Forge doesn't really do anything, but may as well. You'll have to get through me first. And then deploy Tomic. Can crew Heart of Kiron using Gideon if we'd like. You're full of surprises. And attack. And at this point we're just going face. Opponent is down to three. Frostbite gonna hit Gideon instead. So, could still crew Heart of Kiran in response. Turns out that getting the extra loyalty would have been more useful. Don't force my hand. Count on a rematch. So they can get to draw two. 
Crewing the heart might have been a mistake if they've got some sweeper here. Gets rid of the one ring, not good enough apparently. They get a mountain. And a meter golem, their last card. So... Goes for Heart of Kiran, but they might have been better off taking out something else. Now Heartless Act can answer Meter Golem and then get in for 4 damage. Well, this was a close one. All right, so we got to see our black-white super friends in action. Now, Atomic didn't actually trigger a single time in all the games I've played with it, so it's just a 2-4 flyer that maybe gets a bit of a discount, but I think you can probably do better just playing any other black-white planeswalker or some other card as your commander, and then you can still go for a super friends style of deck, and uh, yeah, just giving up Atomic doesn't seem all that bad. So yeah, all in all, not the most competitive brawl deck out there. You're probably gonna be behind when facing some of the more dedicated ramp decks that can go over the top, but if you're up against creature strategies where your removal and sweepers line up well, then the planeswalkers can certainly take over. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.